Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. I am Jim Ward, a PDM technical support specialist. In today's video, I will be discussing local files in your SOLIDWORKS PDM vault, what they are, why you need to be concerned about them, how to find them, and how to delete them. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. What are local files? Well, they are files that are in the PDM vault on your computer, but they are not part of the file vault. As a matter of fact, they only exist on your computer. How do you know if it's a local file? Well, first of all, they are grayed out. So files and for folders. On files, if you look on their state, they will say local file. Now, how are they created? Well, sometimes when you save a file in PDM, PDM does not automatically add the file to the file vault. And when that happens, you'll see it as a local file. If you see it, uh, depending upon the settings in the PDM admin tool, you may not have the ability to see local files. And we'll get into that later. But really the dangerous files are files that you have looked at before so that you have a cached version of those files on your computer. And normally, of course, there's SOLIDWORKS files because of their references. And then someone on a, a different computer either moves those files or renames them. And when that happens, then that cached file is still sitting there on your computer, but it's no longer attached to the vault. It does say a local file and it is read only. Why do you need to be concerned about local files anyway? Well, cached files that are left behind when the original file is moved or renamed is still seen by SOLIDWORKS. And sometimes this local file is opened by SOLIDWORKS instead of the file that is still part of PDM. This can cause the same assembly drawing to open differently when opened on two different computers. How do you find them? Okay, so the first step would be to clear your local cache. While that's not necessary, it does uh, reduce the time that it takes to do the search. And then go to the root level of your vault, right click a clear area and choose search for local files. This will search in the current folder and all subfolders for files that exist in the local view but are not in SQL. And when done, the search result can be saved in Excel. So how can you remove those local files? In the previous slide, we did a search to find them. Now that we have that search result, export that into Excel. In Excel, you can sort the result by file path, go to each file path and delete any local files found. You can also make some settings in the admin tool that can help, and we'll go into that a little bit later. There is a tool provided by SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS Knowledge Base Article S-065070. There is a tool called Local File Adder. The reason this is nice is because you can use that tool and use them to delete files that you find. It does the search for local files and gives you the option to either add the files to the file vault or to delete them. The search local files only gives you the option to add them. And if you don't have access to the SOLIDWORKS knowledge base, you can request this particular tool from Go Engineer and we can forward that to you. Settings in the admin tool. Well, first of all, you need to be able to see local files. And so you can go to the settings for all users, go into Explorer and show all files, and that will let everybody see the local files. Secondly, there is a, an option to automatically delete local read-only files that is useful when you browse into a folder, it will delete the local read-only files so quickly you don't even realize that they were ever there. The only problem with this is it only triggers when you actually browse into a folder. So if you're finding files by search, say, it will never delete the local files. Okay, so next I'm going to give you a little demonstration of a local file, how it's created and how it can cause problems, and then how to delete them. I'll give you a little example here. So on one computer, I have an assembly called sample part one, and it's referencing a part called sample part one also. And if you notice, when I click on these, uh, you can see them in the preview. If you look at the version tab, you can see that they are equal to what is in the vault. They have been checked into the vault. And I do have local versions. 
So now I'm going to go to a different computer. I'll do that with the magic of remote desktop. So here I am on the other computer. I'm looking at the same files, sample part one, part, and sample part one assembly. All right, so now on this other computer, I'm going to do something simple. I'm going to take this sample part one. I'm going to put it into a subfolder. So to do that, to move it, I'm just going to do a cut paste. So I will cut it. Come up into this uh, subfolder, and I'm going to paste it. So now I see it has been moved in PDM. This sample part one, if I click on it, and look at the state, the state is still WIP, so you know this is the one that's part of the file vault, and the version is equal to what is in the vault. So let's go back to the to where the location of the um, parent assembly is. Here it is here. So here's the assembly, and you notice there is no local file here. Now let's go back to my original computer, in which I have looked at it, and let me refresh so you can see. And now you see that sample part one that, that was cached on my system is now grayed out. So that's what that gray means, is that it's no longer part of the file vault. If you look at the version tab, it has a question mark on it because it's not part of the file vault. Also, if you look on the state column, you'll see it says local file. So there's your indication that this file is no longer part of the file vault. If we go look in subfolder one, you'll see it does exist over here. So what are the ramifications of this? Let's go back to the other computer, and I'm going to open up this file and make a change to it. So here the file is open in SOLIDWORKS. I did forget to check it out, so I'm going to go ahead and check it out now. And let's make a change to it that's pretty obvious. So I'm going to do um, this and create a um, new sketch on it, simple circle, and do a cut. All right, so obviously I've made a big change to it. I will um, save this file and check it in. All right, so now I've modified the file. And this is the file that's part of the file vault. So again, if I look at preview, you'll see the nice big hole in the file. And if I come over and I look at the, um, the assembly on this computer, I guess we need to open up the assembly for it to update. So there it is. And now let's um, save this and then check it in. The preview, so here on the preview for the assembly, we, we can see the hole in it. Let's go see what it looks like on our original computer. So if I come up here in our original computer, go to the subfolder, select the sample part, and look at the preview. The preview here shows just like it should. Let's go to the, um, the parent assembly. And like before this assembly, well, let's see, it went and got the latest version, so the preview shows just fine. I wonder what happens if we open this up. So what happened? I mean, the preview, it came up looking like it was supposed to, but now it's no longer looking like it's supposed to. It no longer has that hole in it. So what happened? Well, if you go to the file, find references, you'll see that it, it, it pulled that part that's in the same folder as the parent assembly. Again, SOLIDWORKS, as far as SOLIDWORKS is concerned, that's a perfectly valid part, and it's in that same location, and so it pulled that part. This is why it's very important for you to clear out your local files. So let's start by looking at the admin tool and what settings can be used to help with local files. So I'll right click users, and then by doing it this way, these settings apply to all users. And go to Explorer on the left hand side. So in order to see local files, you have to select this top one to show all files. Under local file cleanup, ordinarily I would say check this box. And then when you browse into a folder, if there are, are any local files, it will automatically delete them and it will delete them so quickly you won't even realize that they were there. For my purposes right now, I'm going to uncheck that box because I just want to be able to see local files as I do this demonstration. So there is a default way to search for local files in your entire vault. Go to the root level of your vault, do a right click, and at the bottom you see this search local files. 
So I'll click on that and let that run. Depending upon your particular vault, this can take some time to run. In my case, I don't have that many files locally. And it, but it does show me which files I have that are local files. Notice by default, this checkbox that says add, this particular tool was created for people who work offline and sometimes add files to, while they're in the offline mode. And therefore, they created this tool so you can quickly find those files and add them to the file vault. For our purposes, you probably want to be deleting these local files instead of adding them to the vault. And so you can select this box here, which will open the file list in Excel. Click on that and choose Open All. And then often it shows up down here in the bottom. And in my case, since there's very few, it's easy for me to find them. But this found in column, you can uh, do a sort in Excel and sort by the found in. And then you can go into each folder and delete them. Now you can combine this with the setting in with this setting here to automatically delete local read-only files in the file vault. And then when you browse into each location, it immediately deletes all of the files that are local and read-only. And if there are any, any local files left, it's files that are not read-only that were added in some other way. And then you can decide what to do with those local files. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave us a comment below. If you have a topic that you'd like for us to cover in a future video, make sure to note it in the comments section. You're welcome to visit our website, GoEngineer.com, for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. This has been Jim Ward. Have a great day.